Hello there everyone, I'm John bringing you another quest marker review, and today, we're crushing some dingers. Super Mega Baseball is the first sports game being reviewed in my So Have You Heard About review series, but it's probably one of the most important non AAA, indie, whatever sports games that's been released in the past few years because it's so darn good and it offers such a rich baseball experience for PC gamers. As someone who's played both RBI Baseball on the Switch and MLB The Show on the PS4, those are both opposite sides of the baseball video game spectrum and both notably on console. I find RBI Baseball too simplistic sometimes and I sometimes find the MLB The Show too complex as a baseball sim. And I've never quite gotten into out of the park baseball, which is more of a management simulation, but maybe one day. Super Mega Baseball isn't a recreation of major league baseball franchises, which some might find as a negative, but it is the sweet spot between baseball arcades and baseball sims currently out on the market. And honestly, the over-the-top nature of its leagues and teams and players makes it distinct and hilarious and kind of refreshing. Super Mega Baseball 2 builds on its predecessors to offer multiple rewarding gameplay modes, immense customization, and a whole lot of fun. I've spent about 20 hours with Super Mega Baseball, and I'm still about neck deep into multiple seasons as well as the online pennant race mode. This is a game that you can keep coming back to over and over and over again. But let's break down the game modes you're likely to be spending the most time with. Each, I think, offering something unique and rewarding. Exhibition mode is that one-off generic game mode, but it can be played against the CPU or on the couch against your buddy. But the interesting part of the couch local play is that it can be played both competitive or cooperative. Competitive play has you squaring off against one another, whereas cooperative play has you both competing against the CPU. In this co-op mode, you alternate in the batting lineup, as well as who pitches and who fields. While this is nice in theory, it can make Make gameplay a little droopy. Fielding isn't as much fun or as rewarding as pitching is and also occupies a fraction of the time. But if you're worried about rolling over your buddy in competitive local play, one of the best features about Super Mega Baseball 2 is the Ego Mode, which is their difficulty system. And each player can be playing the game at a different Ego. This affects contact rates, pitching accuracy, and fielding. And even more, you can break down the difficulty into the different areas of pitching, batting, fielding, and so forth, to adjust their difficulty as you see fit. So you might find batting much harder than pitching, as you can play it at easier batting Ego than pitching or fielding ego. This difficulty breakdown is a great tool to practice and compete at, and having asymmetrical difficulties and local couch play is definitely great because it can help stop your girlfriend from cussing you out because you just can't stop crushing diggers! The nuances of Super Mega ramp up when playing the single player season modes and the online pennant race mode. As you begin to immerse yourself in the classic batter pitcher duels that are so iconic to the sport. The single player offline season modes can follow a default route or a custom route. The default route has you picking and playing one of the pre-created teams, one of the default teams, with the ability really only to alter the cosmetic or the aesthetic of the lineup, as well as the batting order. Uh, the custom route gives you the tools to literally recreate the 2019 MLB National American League, all of the teams with all the specificity, and then play it out. Custom mode also lets you individually alter player stats. So if you want to make an entirely jacked team, go for it. Me, personally, I'm recreating my greatest hits variations of the Toronto Blue Jays so I can live up my fantasy of having Carlos Delgado and Jose Batista on the same team together. The default mode offers probably a more balanced and challenging experience as you play through a 48 game season to become the champs. And with all of baseball, one of the most fun things is the analytics. After every couple of games, I love checking out the league leaders and on-base percentage or slugging, and I was surprised to see the game tracks analytics like sack flies and OPS and opponent's batting average. Just more numbers to crunch. The pennant mode is arguably where it's at. 
Playing competitively online is the closest we get to that kind of authentic baseball experience. In a five inning single game series, Super Mega Baseball shines. Just like in the default season mode, you have to pick one of the pre-made teams. You're then in a small 15 or so player divisions where you're trying to get to the top three at the end of each pennant race to win and move on. I never had to wait for more than a few minutes to get into a pennant race match and I've tried to kind of at all hours of the day here in uh, the Eastern Standard Time Zone there's still a solid community that are trying to crush dingers against one another in Super Mega Baseball 2, and that's great and exciting. And the intensity of every pitch being something that can win or lose a game is just exhilarating. It reminds me of playoff baseball, like what's going on right now, where the quiet of thousands of fans can suddenly erupt as a 3-2 full count can transform in a flash to a walk-off home run. The pitcher-batter duels are amazing. I get super amped whenever I strike out an opponent by freezing them in the strike zone. I now know full why why Strowman just got so fired up. There are some problems with Super Mega Baseball, however, and I'm still unsure as to whether I should chalk this up to inexperience and poor skill or more problematic design, but the fielding of pop-ups and line drives. I don't know what's going on. Sometimes your fielder kind of gets automatically guided towards them to make it a kind of simpler experience, but sometimes it just doesn't do that. And I've no problem in trying to get a handle on how to field a pop-up or a crush line drive down the foul line, but the inconsistency in whether or not I'm going to assume direct control can be a little uh, frustrating. And second, I sometimes found the bottom of the strike zone to be super loosey-goosey. I threw some curveballs way past the knees, but somehow that good old ump behind the plate was like, yo, that's strike three. And they were like, what? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. I'm like already down by three runs, so give me everything you got. And third, the systems of fitness and mojo can be a little weird. They're not bad per se, I just sometimes wish there was something a little more in-depth or predictable. Fitness operates at a higher level, and it, it's the system that covers injuries and hot and cold streaks, I think. And sometimes I don't know why a certain third baseman is totally juiced. I get that there's a risk of injuries off of line drives and diving and sliding and stuff, but I don't know when or why players are super healthy. And Mojo is more of a game-to-game -game system, but not always. And Mojo can go down when you walk a batter or hit into an inning ending double play. But again, sometimes I don't know why grounding out in the top of one inning versus another results in the loss of Mojo. It can be a little opaque. But while these aren't perfect, I do jive with the general idea of what they're trying to do. Fitness is trying to simulate healthiness and injury and mojo is trying to go after the clutch the ability to work under pressure and hot and cold streaks that the baseball players seem to have so overall i love super mega baseball 2 there are still so many more things to talk about there's a tournament mode there's cross play don't get me started though on some of the foul ball physics with how they just suddenly roll into fair territory because oh my gosh i must have at least lost two games to this but the batter pitcher psychology of the pennant race makes me really wish I could taunt the other team and it perpetually reminds me of postseason baseball. And I really like how customization goes hand in hand with the player diversity that the game allows you. And my favorite player name, just as an aside, is 100% Rip Dingers. What a classic. This game gets a definite positive score. The quest marker seal of approval. If you love baseball at all, pick it up. If you're looking for one of the best sports games on PC that's not Rocket League or some 2K crap, please give it a try. And if you do, I'll see you on the field. So don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.